Welcome everyone to this podcast about the Leading Innovation Excellence Program, a program that we offer on behalf of the Erasmus Center for Entrepreneurship. My name is Ferdinand Jaspers, I'm Academic Director of the program, and today I have a great pleasure of talking to Arjan Rensma. Arjan, you're a seasoned innovation professional and expert, and uh, you're a coach in the program. You've been with us from the very start, designing it really as a co-creation between academia and, and, and practice. Um, yeah, before we dive in, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about, about yourself and also what innovation has been in your career? Thanks, yes. great to, to, to be here. Um, I started uh, uh, over 15 years ago at the Philips Not Lab. Uh, maybe some of you uh, still know it, but it was a famous uh, R&D lab of Philips. And there I got the, um, the vibe of, of innovation and of commercialization of technology and knowledge. Uh, done that, been there for a number of years until in 2001 I joined a small spin out from the University of Maastricht called ISIS. And it was all about sustainable innovation. So then I got the, the, the virus of sustainable innovation, systemic innovation. I have been doing that since then, uh, last lately uh, for DSM, uh, a company which is known to be purpose led, performance driven, in, trying to embed it, doing well by doing good. Um, but also for myself, uh, like I suggest, also uh, my, for myself, you keep on learning, keep on innovating yourself. Um, and that's also why I joined the program, because it forced me, or forces me, also to, to step up my game. Uh, so in that sense, I learn from the students as much as they learn from me. Mm -hmm. I think the the uh, the program that we have is really about also the personal development of the participants. They bring with them their own cases, their live cases, their ongoing cases of becoming better uh, in innovation. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in a minute mm -hmm. when it really is, uh, is about the impact project of the participants yeah. and your role as a coach in that. But of course, we also bring in the live cases of, of for instance, you, of all the experts in the program. And uh, of course, your experience in the last uh, 10 plus years has been the, the incredible journey of TSM of really stepping up and consciously developing an innovation competence, an innovation system. Um, so what can you tell, tell us about at high level the journey that it's been for you from the very early days until a very mature and, of course, well-known innovation system nowadays. Um, yeah, so enlighten us. Um, when I joined DSM in 2010, uh, it was being led innovation by Chief Innovation Officer Rolf van Leen. Uh, and we all talked about all the fantastic things of startups and what have you not. Um, and then Bob said, you know what? Have you seen the statistics of innovation, statistics of startups and scale-ups is one to 10. So one out of 10 is successful. That may work for startups. It is too expensive for corporates. Um, DSM is a corporate that invests in, in, in assets, heavy assets. So we don't talk about investments in pilots or MVPs of a couple of thousand. In our case, it goes up from a million to much more than that. So to play that game is too expensive. So we said, how can we beat those odds? Because they're not against us, or they're not in favor, they're against us. Uh, and then DSM, Rob, and a number of other uh, enlightened leaders said, you know what? We have teams that do the innovations, but we also have teams that help them beat those odds. So I want to have a team that, uh, that makes more sure that we reach the objectives that we have set out for ourselves. Um, we call that now innovation excellence. Uh, they've been named a number of things, uh, but those, that is what happened over the, over the past 10 years. So I think the, the, the beautiful thing, well, the beautiful, the, I like it a lot, is that um, the managing board said, you know what, we're going to appoint a leader, a, a focal point of innovation that will be a chief innovation officer. Uh, he will be supported by what some uh, change managers say is a leading coalition. In our case, we call them the Innovation Council. Currently, they're called the Innovation Leadership Team. They are in charge, they are responsible for making the, the innovation happen. Then we said you need an objective, you need a point on the horizon and at that time we chose for a number. Uh, we said we want to have a billion sales from innovation within three to four years time. The number also when I talked to Rolp, he said that will also help to, to get some kind of a vibe going because the persons that were responsible for achieving that number they call themselves the billion bunch and you can all see the pistols and stuff like that so it also becomes more like a geuze now that helps because culture is actually everything so you help to mm. define that culture 
So now you have a target, you have a group that can develop it, and you have a supporting group that can support the, the, the teams in achieving it, innovation mm -hmm. program office. Because as you can imagine, these innovation directors, it is not the only thing that they do during the day. They also have a number of other things because right. uh, the DSM is a very ambidextrous organization. Then you say, okay, but what then, what then, what does that innovation engine look like? And where do you want to go with this engine? So you right. said, okay, can you tell us a little bit more about, because I think that this is, this is a wonderful insight and the key insight, I think also that we want to get across. On the one hand, it's very much about leadership, visionary leadership by motivating uh, the senior team, but also the rest of the organization, having a story and explanation that's motivating, that's long-term. But then at the same time, you also need this, this engine, the rest of this engine, uh, which is uh, maybe less soft, which is, maybe less um, um, uh, about motivation and about influencing, but it's more about indeed systems and structure. So what has been your experience there? Well, what are we talking about? And also how do you do that performance management for innovation? Yeah, yeah, good question. So once you set out the objective, the 1 billion, and we also at that time already, if I can see as my previous CEO said, I want to be, we had a big problem called climate change induced innovation. So you also want to have that sustainability part in there. Okay, if that is the objective, then what are then the skills that people need to be able to achieve those, those objectives? And, and what, what systems like UCA do they need? Um, and system post also means routines. Um, and one of the, so we had a pro, we have a program and we also measure the progress of the program. And we do that by so-called innovation diagnostics. So at first you decide, okay, what does an innovation look like? A number of dimensions. We had a couple of organizations help us to define those. Uh, together with a number of peers in the industry, so we could compare ourselves against those peers. Uh, and then we track those diagnostic elements. Uh, every two years we did an innovation, so-called innovation diagnostic, to see where are we now in terms of progress along those, I think there were nine uh, dimensions. Then of course you can, consider the gap. You can also say, I'm happy with what I see, but you can also say, no, we have a gap compared to last year because we don't see any progress or, and uh, we compare ourselves against peers in the industry and we see that there is a gap. Mm. Later on, we also compare ourselves in terms of sustainability. What the, where do you want to be there? If you've identified the gap, then you can decide, okay, but how am I going to close the gap? And then you have a discussion about, about uh, how to do that, with whom to do that, and what way you should do that. Uh, we also use so-called three-year uh, corporate strategic dialogue to have the discussion how to close that gap and then you you yet get this thing moving uh, so we've done that for instance and i like that mm -hmm. you said six years so then you get all these data and you can you can look back and you can compare yourself and i think uh this is a, this is a wonderful case i think a textbook case it's well known worldwide for for how dsm has developed this competence also it's not just a competence but also it has been paying off uh we, we see the tangible results also in the stock market. So it's yeah. it's also uh, in that sense, uh, a wonderful case of, of success and so much we can learn from that. I think uh, the wonderful insight that I get from, 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 from listening to you is indeed there is this fundamental distinction between doing the innovation, coming up with ideas, maturing them, coming up with business models. And yes, that's one process. And we know how to train that. We know how to become better at that. It's yeah. difficult, but we, we know an awful lot. and. But here we're talking about a second thing is developing the actual competence around that as an integral system to become better at innovation and all the supporting elements for that and the HR leadership, uh, how to set up an open innovation uh, program, you, you name it. Also to take out the, uh, the uh, coincidence. So you may have a portfolio of projects, and if you don't have this competence of looking at it, uh, about work, working on the machine rather than mm -hmm. in the machine, there can be uh, coincidental successes. You don't know if it's coincidental or it's structural, right. because they don't learn from each other. If you have this competence that you look at those successes, you can make each other learn from them from each other, yeah. and you can make it rep repetitive. So right. you can repeat the success, and that sense become more successful. Yeah. Rather, if you don't do it like that, then you still always, it's always like mm -hmm. playing the odds. Some you win, some you lose, and you don't really know why that is. Yeah. So one of the insights is also then that this is, you know, developing the innovation competence is also change management, uh, but then specifically for innovation, which makes it a particular kind of change management because it's unique. It's about, of course, a fundamentally long-term and uncertain type of activity, uh, which is not often understood by, by leadership or, yeah. you know, the Typically, most organizations that we work with, obviously, are far from the, the, the level of maturity that DSM has, has been able to achieve. Um, 
but even for DSM, obviously, it, it, you're never done. You have to maintain it. You have to sometimes also take take a leap to reach the next level, right? Because it's yeah. this, I think, also one of the insights that we have and what participants come to appreciate is that, you know, on an incremental path to better innovation performance, you can achieve only so much. At some point, at certain points, you have to take a systemic leap. Yeah. You have to, or across all the dimensions or multiple dimensions, you have yeah. to take a step uh, in terms of, you know, maybe more resources, more top management support, more, more performance management as well. And then at the same time, maintaining creativity, freedom, and all the other necessary social support for innovation. That's what Einstein said, if you don't like the result, but you keep on doing the same things, then we call it insanity. And expecting yeah. a, new, a new result, we yeah. call it insanity. Yeah. That's a good point. I think that what we, uh, what you see happening in our, no, 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 in our case, but innovation actually is not the objective. Innovation is a means to an end. And what is it that you want to achieve? And I think what we train at EC at, uh, at the lead program is help others, help the leadership, but from the top to the bottom, because everybody's a leader, um, to define what is then that end. And then yeah. you come into something which makes it really interesting. So you move into the area of change management, like you're suggesting, because this is all about the identity of a company. So we, a couple of times, because you don't have to not do that too often, we had these workshops with the leadership saying, okay, what company do we want to be in five or 10 years right. time? What do we want to be? If somebody looks upon us, what should they see then from us? Yeah. And then you get really fundamental. Uh, yeah. We had uh, discussions um, because these MS in all kinds of industries, what you also see happening is that there's industries that are very nice and there's upcoming industries, but they may be competing with the current industries. Mm -hmm. Now, how to how to facilitate that jumping yeah. that curve becomes much more about change management. And I think that also explains a little bit the resistance to change we sometimes encounter as, as innovation professionals, yeah. because you touch upon the actual identity, not only of the companies, but specifically of the leadership that you work with. Correct. They identify themselves with, with their company. And then if you come along and go like, you guys, uh, we were, we, we were selling cigarettes, but that's not the cool thing anymore. We have to do something else in the future. Right. People feel as a, as a, could feel as a personal attack. And what we train people is how to deal with it. How can you still get traction in yeah. that kind of context? Yeah, and, and, and I think, and, you know, in, uh, in line with what you're saying is that if, uh, if I reflect a little bit on, on the participants that we've had on, on some, some common themes that, that have emerged, it's really that, of course, if there's anything that uh, has the capability to make the vision and the identity of the company and the long-term strategy of the company tangible and specific. And th then it's, it's innovation. It's the yeah. choices that you make yeah. on a daily basis of selecting one project over another, yeah. of yeah. how you balance, let's say, th the allocation of your innovation resources to one specific topic or another. So um, that means that, you know, from a leadership perspective, from a change management perspective, uh, we've seen that the participants uh, become aware of their of their role, of their, of their, also their, the ability that they have to support senior management yeah. to, to spread the message, to, to bring the strategy to life, actually. Yeah, um, so, yes, we, you know, we, we learn an awful lot from, for instance, your experiences and your uh, journey in the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, but then also the participants themselves. They reflect a lot and they work a lot on their ongoing life yeah. uh, journeys and, and impact projects, as we call them. So you're one of the coaches, obviously, from practice in, in our program. So what are some, some insights that you can share or, or some, some other things of how you approach those, those impact projects working with our participants? What, what, what have, you, have you seen? What do you, do you typically do as a coach? In the end, and it's not always, it's not always possible. I have, to be, I have to say, uh, we can claim a lot, but I was very fortunate to work at DSM and getting the, the space to do it. Uh, so what I'm referring to is that in the end, you are an innovation professional like nobody else. You should know all the things that the people also know that you work with, also to earn credibility. You don't have to be the specialist everywhere, but you should know the business modeling, uh, bowling, whatever you know. But, or end, what you also are or want to become and need to become to be impactful is a trusted advisor. And innovation is, is managing uncertainty. So you face people that are in a day-to-day, -day, very uncertain situation. Uh, and I think now, 
unfortunately, during, due to COVID, many of many more of us face now how that feels. They face now what does it feel like and what does it do to me? Do I do I flight, freeze, fight, something else? Uh, so in our program, or what I also what we see is that you you would like to become the trusted advisor in uns, in an uncertain environment. But also being, I think we discussed it earlier, Ferdinand, to be humble because you are not running the project. You are not running the company. What you do, your job is to advise the people that do how to do it. It's also a difficult, a difficult role because you're always behind the scene. And we have compared earlier with, with a theater where um, innovation professionals, such as innovation drivers or trust advisors, they set the scene literally. They hang up the curtains, they hang up the lights, they, they, they organize the audience, which is the managing board or your innovation leadership. You tell them when to clap and when not to clap. You put the play on stage, which are the ventures or the innovation projects. You have the dialogues. Um, and if everything works out well, then you have um, success. However, the success is not so much your success. You are behind the stage. And the, diff the difference between the innovation coaches we train and, and in the theater is that in the theater, the director is on that, on that black role in uh, saying, hey, this was the director. And that's not in your case. So you have to like, because if you don't like it, you have to like to be there, to be mm. the, the person behind the scenes, be the networker. Uh, and, and feel the success in different ways. And there are many of them, as, as a number of people are saying. But if you don't like that, then it's difficult to survive. There are also mm -hmm. big choices in career. It's, 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 a, it can, it's a career impacting choice right. to become a facilitator. Yeah. Such That's as often that. also an insight that people get that yeah. actually those, those, let's say, other innovation roles than doing the execution yeah. of innovation, yeah. being part of a team, yeah. developing ideas or you know, doing yeah. experiments in the field with customers, developing prototypes, uh, that those other roles, like working on the processes, uh, training and coaching yeah. teams, um, coaching leaders, for that matter, that, that's a profession as well, working on that machine. And um, as we mentioned before, it's about maturing that competence as an organization with, 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 with at the end of the day, a bigger group of people, obviously, you can't do it on, uh, on your own. Then one of, the, one of the things, obviously, that we've seen in the, more and more in the last couple of years, back to this link to the strategy or the vision mm -hmm. of the company, yeah is that of course more and more companies become uh, purpose-led yep. uh, more and more attention is being paid to sustainability to impact on society and then um, obviously that has an influence on innovation on the innovation profession on the, the types of activities that are being performed and, 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 and selected so also as dsm became more and more mature in innovation uh, and dsm being the company that it is you know very much purpose uh, purpose-led uh, how did that impact, at some point, the innovation process? And how is, have you been able to, to integrate that into that innovation machine, so to speak? What have you uh, encountered there and, and what are your lessons learned? We, uh, uh, we created, I'm, I'm making it out right now, but I think looking, uh, looking back uh, at this, what we did, we created a, a hypothesis saying, doing well by doing good. Well, how can you do that? Um, I think already since 2016, be careful there, if you build a business case for a, a big investment, a capital investment, you have to develop a business case with and without CO2 pricing. And we already took a significant number of dollars per ton. And you had to propose to the board, this is my case without the CO2, and this is the case with the CO2. Um, we have also have DSM also has DSM also has a sustainability team. Um, they have identified a number of topics, a number of criteria with which we can check how sustainable DSM is, and we incorporate those KPIs in the innovation KPIs um, on a rather high level, but also on a more operational level where, where we where we check out the teams as well. Um, of course, the key thing, as with everything, is culture. Uh, it's behavior. So how do you how can you convince the teams that they will also work on something that is for the, for the future and sustainable? What I think is uh, very nice from the innovation part is that in ready, so it's all about dilemmas. It's a dilemma between purpose and performance. 
If you've been in innovation for a couple of years, you already have learned dilemma management because it's the dilemma between short term, middle term and long term. So if, if you're good at it, you have already honed those skills, you've already encountered dilemma management. Now we have up the game. Now the dilemma is not only long term, short term, but also between purpose and performance. So in that sense, I think the skill set that we train our people with, also through having something like innovation programs, like you said, the innovation consultants, that really helps to embed it in the organization. But also to say, it's not that strange. We've been doing that already for years. Yep. Only you now apply it to a different topic. Yep. Ah, okay. And I, I think uh, an extreme case of that is the innovation that's going on. Also there much more uh, over time, much more professionally is uh, public organizations like large municipalities or uh, ministries. And in our program, in the last couple of years, we see more and more participants from government yeah. agencies, yeah. from the Ministry of Defense, from uh, the tax authority, from large municipalities indeed. And also, Arjan, you uh, have spent part of your career in public organizations. And of course, there very much there is, by definition, of course, a public purpose or a bigger goal. Yeah. Um, I think for me is the, the evidence that we, or the, the hypothesis that we had and which I think is, is confirmed throughout those years is that at, in its essence, the, the necessity to, to innovate in a systemic way and also how to do that, which elements to take into account, namely processes, people development, and also culture and leadership. At a high level, it's exactly the same whether you're in a corporate or in a public um, environment. So to make it a little bit more specific about, you know, the innovation excellence mm. in, in, a, mm. in a public domain, mm. um, what are some, some, some insights that you, that you have or some examples mm. that you have about, about that specific context mm -hmm. and innovation mm -hmm. excellence? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I think where it comes together is uh, when you go into the sustainable innovations, into transitions, you move away a bit not a, a way, you add a next level to it. So it's not only about developing new products or new businesses like Avenger, it's about developing new ecosystems. Um, for instance, in DSM, we have a, a circular uh, platform called Niaga. Uh, it's based on a Niaga technology, but if you would only invest in Niaga technology, you would only get part of the benefit. We also need to, to change or innovate the supply chain. We also need to change or innovate the partners the uh, buyers, the whole thing about circularity is that you can take it back and not, it's not, not only recycling, but you take it back and you make it more like virgin material. So there has to be a take back system in place as well, because otherwise you're just pushing it in the market and there's nothing to right. take it back with. So then you become, it becomes ecosystem innovation when you go to the level of transitions. Now, of course, not all governments and not always luckily, but basically one of the key things that they are tasked is to do these system innovations new tax, new law, uh, you name it, new um, new infrastructure, new waterways, you name it. So there it becomes, like you say, at the, at the level of developing ecosystems and making those successful, there's a lot that both parties can learn from each other. And the, and the key thing is, it sounds so trivial, but it is the case, it's also about the KPIs. So yes, if you are a public organization and you're driven by a purpose, but don't forget to make it tangible. It doesn't have to be quant uh, financial, but make it quantifiable. On the other hand, in terms of the organization of the companies, if you are performance driven or if you are purpose driven, it's not only saying, well, we, we're, we're good for the people, no, make it more tangible. So there, they can learn a lot from each other, as we also see in the program. Yeah. So at the level of the ecosystems, orchestrate, orchestrating ecosystems, making those successful, there's a lot of, uh, of uh, things right. similar. By the way, actually, I've also seen that when I worked for that small scale out, spin out from the University of um, you need each other. You need each other to make the, the, the transition to energy. You can't do that only by a company. At DSM, we also work in the solar industry and biofuels. You can try to do it by yourself, but you need of the governments also for regulation, all kind of other stuff. On the other hand, as a government, you can't do it without companies. You can say, I'll change regulation, but if a company doesn't make the products that your audience wants, you're also failing. So you're, you need to collaborate. Yeah. Well, Arjan, thanks so much for sharing uh, some of your insights and also your, your ways to contribute to, to our program. Uh, I think we've covered a lot. We, again, we've touched upon the, the necessity actually to, to approach innovation from a systemic point of view. Yeah. 
that this is about a change and a maturing process that we can master. It's yeah. incredibly difficult, but we know yeah. what to take into account, how to professionalize that and to increase the chances of success. Uh, we've talked also about how to integrate sustainability yeah. uh, as part of that. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, hope to see you, see you later to talk about some more uh, characteristics of our program. If you'd like to, to learn more about our program, please do check out our website, ece.nl. Thank you.